you've been into that cage, uh, if you see a picture of it, of it, if you're going to show pictures of that cage on television or in a newspaper, it can never, never describe what it's really like. It's, it's like this. You can't, if you try to spread your arms, you can't get any further than this. Uh, you can't stand there. It, 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 it comes uh, only till here. This, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even put a dog in uh, a space like that. The cell had been meticulously hand-built by Dutroux. Michel Martin had painted it yellow. The girls were kept there, often with no water, no electricity, and fed on cold tin food and moldy bread. Once released, they were taken upstairs and chained to the bed so they wouldn't escape. There they were subjected to frequent rapes. De True referred to 12-year-old Sabine as his new wife. He had brainwashed his young victims, telling them that he was the nicest member of the gang, who was protecting them from the more evil members who would kill them if they escaped. So what happens when the police finally opens that, that cage? Sabine and Letizia come out, but the first man who's there in front of them is Marc Dutroux. He's proud to, to show the police his construction, how good it was, was hidden. And he's very proud when uh, he sees that Sabine, neither Letizia, dare to come out. They're still there in the corner. They're uh, afraid. They think that the evil guys are there. And the true has to talk to them and say, no, no, come out, it's okay. And they, and they both kiss him and say thank you. J'ai l'immense plaisir de vous annoncer que nous avons retrouvé une scène et ce de Justia, de aussi Sabine. The release of Sabine and Letitia had extra resonance for the parents of Anne, Effie, Julie, and Melissa. For me, it was a proof that I was right by saying all that year that it was possible that we could find Anne and Aphia alive. I always looked for living persons, and I'm happy that I looked for living persons, with, because it's a different when you look for diff living persons. You really look, you don't waste a second. And I'm pleased that I did it, because now I can say I did everything to look for them. Files of other missing children around the country flooded into Neuf Chateau. Bourlet and Connerot and their team worked continuously, searching other properties connected with the true. They still had that hope, maybe we find another cage with living girls somewhere. But it soon became clear that the search efforts had come too late. On August the 17th, two days after the release of Sabine and Letitia, the bodies of Julie and Melissa were discovered, buried in Dutroux's garden at Sala Boussier. Jeudi dernier, c'était l'euphorie. Aujourd'hui, c'est l'horreur, évidemment. Mais je veux dire que pour nous, enquêteurs, nous avons vécu. I mean, for us investigators, emotionally, we went through the various stages in reverse. On a commencé, je vais dire, par. We started, I'd say, with something that was joyful. Joyeux, qui était la découverte de. The discovery of Sabine and Letitia. And then we moved toward the discovery of things that were extremely sad. Other children, including Anne and Effie, were still missing. The Belgian police requested the help of the British police team that had been involved in the case of Fred and Rosemary West to help in the search. It was just like being back at Cromwell Street. The media were there in their hordes. Uh, they were camped out everywhere. And they would not go away. 
John Bennett and the Belgian police were to search each of the two six houses in the area, looking for missing children. The search moved to a house in Jumet, where neighbors had informed police that Dutroux had been using digging equipment in the garden. Dutroux was very capable of disguising what he had done. And he had gone to a lot of trouble uh, to bury and hide his victims. Anyone who considers using a JCB or an earth moving truck to put somebody something like 15 foot below the ground just shows them to be what they are, controlling psychopaths who are extremely devious. A week after the arrival of Bennett's team, they uncovered the bodies of two girls. Anne and Evia had been drugged and buried alive. Alleszins één vraag voor ons is opgelost. Dat is dat wij wij niet meer hoeven te zoeken dat ze gevonden zijn. The nation grieved for the families. Their search had come to an end, but the shockwaves of the case had only just started. Grief turned to anger as details of the bungled investigation came out. Neuf Chateau, Palais de Justice. Here in 1996, Marc Dutroux was charged with the kidnap, rape and murder of four young girls and the kidnap and rape of two others. While the nation recoiled in horror, rumors spoke of conspiracy and corruption, reaching to the highest levels of government, as details of the bungled police investigation began to surface. This was in the period that the public opinion discovered Operation Otello, discovered all the things that had, had gone wrong before the arrest of the truth. So their reaction is, there must be some conspiracy, there must be something. This is unbelievable. The Neuf Chateau authorities instigated a broad and vigorous investigation into a suspected paedophile network, arresting 29 people, including police, gendarmes, and prominent businessmen. But it appeared to some that they had dug too deep. Connerot, the investigating magistrate, was sacked from the case under a tenuous accusation that he had lost his objectivity, compounding rumors of an establishment cover-up. The situation in Belgium was like a, a revolution. Belgians took to the streets in protest. Workmen went on strike, and firemen turned their hoses on official buildings. The protest culminated in the biggest demonstration since the Nuremberg rallies, the White March white to represent the innocence of the children. I think it was the biggest manifestation ever. There were no posters in, in, in the streets to say you go to Brussels that day for the White March. It was a word that was spread amongst Belgians. There wasn't even much publicity on, on radio and television. Everybody knew that they had to be there. There were more than 300,000 people marching to the streets of Brussels. Someone wrote a letter and put it on the grave of Anne the day after the White March. And he wrote and he said, Anne, it was a good day yesterday. And we saw your father for, for the first time again laughing. And that's the truth. It was that feeling. The people had united in their thousands against a Belgium they felt was rotten to the core. The protests were too great to be ignored. In an attempt to appease them, a parliamentary committee was set up to examine the police investigation and the secretive Operation Othello. <laughs> 